Hi there, I'm going to walk through Rafiq's treatment plan and process. Exactly, we took him from this, where he had these failing carriers, upper front teeth, and not very good dentures, to this, where we've got metal reinforced, complete upper and lower dentures. And he really had absolutely fantastic suction on this lower denture. It was amazing, All right. like that. And once, once we'd finished, it was super cool. Okay. <laughs> so this is the um, the story of just getting from here to here. So all of the lab work is done by Rowan. He's my dental technician, and I do all the clinical work. So here is Rafiq at the beginning with these failing teeth. So his remaining upper natural teeth there. Um, in the, this is his lower arch. He's got no teeth at all in the lower arch, but really great ridges, considering he'd had the extractions over 10 years ago, the remaining missing teeth gone. So the, um, we, had, we had good potential suction, primarily because of the big ridges, and also the sublingual spongy tissues as well, too, were really good for helping with that suction effect. So these are his teeth. Oh, age is not great, is it? Really sugary, high caries diets. You know, these failing teeth there. That's it. And we've got also the other thing that's really nice in terms of getting potential suction is favorable tongue position. So Rafiq's lower, uh, his tongue position when he opened his mouth, the tongue just sitting slightly forward just to help press the denture down both sides. He's wearing these upper and lower um, dentures. They were virtually unwearable. He was just, he really did struggle with these. And um, he had many attempts at wearing them, but they just were not comfortable for him at all. And they've been relined, sort of like super thick as well. And um, just looking at these dentures, I just, whenever I see new patients, it, most of the time there's loads and loads of faults. In the lower, it's generally the underextended in the retromolar pad areas, number one. And secondly, they're not border molded correctly and are often overextended on these buccal and lingual areas They're like that. So you can see he's got this weird soft lining material on there to try and sort things out there. No extension of the retromolar pad on both sides. Again, that, that can really help with increased stability if we do have that section on them there. And also the teeth are right over the ridge, not set on the pound line slightly outside to give the tongue a little bit more space. I like to set the lower teeth on the pound line, named after Earl Pound, which is slightly buckle to the crest of the ridge so this is the the upper teeth there theoretically restorable um but in practice in clinical practice um i don't think they're really um, worth keeping those teeth even though i love natural teeth love them and i'd never like taking them out so, but we decided to do that. So the treatment approach was to um, add onto his existing old partial denture just as a temporary measure. So add on those five upper front teeth, number one. And then number two, get on and make the upper and lower complete denture straight away, metal-based ones. And then between nine and 12 months after extracting the teeth, reline the upper denture. So here's this is visit one. So visit one, I did a pickup impression for the teeth. So this was a an impression of the uh, to to actually pick up the denture.
this actually is an impression of the lower denture there so we've got that the occlusal surfaces but we kept hold of that actually but this is an impression of the upper there with his natural teeth this is in situ um and then this goes through to rowan and then rowan can pour this cast cast that up and then um He's got the teeth on the front there, and he can take off those off and replace them in the denture itself. So I, I like using these transform trays; they're lovely. There, so that's the denture in place. I also did a bite record as well, so Rowan can then mount that um, on the articulator. So he gets the, all of this there, and then that's mounted onto the articulator like this with the cast that we've got there. You can take the teeth off and add on the teeth at the front there. So this is, with most immediate dentures that I do, we just carve out about two millimeters just into the sockets there, and then add the teeth on to that there. And this is socket fit, just because he's got you know, quite a big ridge there. And we don't want to make a massive flange. We want to put the teeth back where they used to be. So that's fine as a temporary measure. So it just gives him something he can wear. Because we've been taking out those really aesthetically important upper front teeth there. So it just gives him the option that he can then use that just if need be. So if we fast forward now to visit two, we're ready to extract these upper teeth and fit these temporary dentures there. So what I did was before extracting those teeth, I just did an impression because I want Rowan to have those upper front teeth as a reference for creating the new complete denture. So we can copy both the shapes and the positions of those upper front teeth because they were actually looked quite nice aesthetically. So I took these teeth out uh, I like using luxatus to get these things out. You can see we've got a little bit of ankylosis and bone that's come with these. But I've lifted the um, teeth out with luxatus. That looks like it snapped during the extraction. There, um, this is once I've taken the teeth out. And if the gum between the teeth, the incidental areas, if that gapes open, then I just pop a little, you know, a few little sutures just in there just to close that up like that. So, um, and so this is me here after removing the teeth and we've got this situation there. So this is the transform trays that I love using. So I, I'm quite happy to go ahead and do a primary impression straight away at this particular point in time. So that's the tray loaded just there with blueprints. I like using blueprint there. And this is my syringe here there. So I squirt that into the sulcus and also squirt that just into the, um, just right up into the vault of the pallet too. Just like that. So that's the upper primary impression that's just made in two parts, just like this here. And uh, I'm not worried at all about doing an impression straight after extracting the teeth. It's absolutely fine, with particularly with alginate. It's a super lovely material. I want to record the full depth of the sulcus all the way around, right up into the vault of the palate too. So this is it here. So, and this is what I'm wanting to do with this. The aim of the game here is to be able to get a special tray of correct extension, a custom tray that Ron's going to make me so I can then um, do a really superb definitive impression. So this is the lower here. We've got um, the lower frame cuts back tray, the Dr. Arbe designed lower tray. I filled that up with um, blueprint, and that's my alginate there. And the way that I do this is I squirt in the alginoplast right into the sulcus all the way around. And this is in the mouth, just underneath the tongue, all the way around over the top of the ridge and then right into the labial sulcus. Um, so that's how I do that. And I'm just wanting to capture everything, like the retromolar pad, 
the link will so curse, the book will so curse, so that I can design a really good special tray. So I've done that, got that job done, and then it's time to fit the um, immediate uh, denture, the one that I've converted. So this is like the where we're taking those teeth. So I've converted this old acrylic based RPD and these are the teeth on that and you can see that where i've taken the teeth out there's quite there's a little bit more bone has come away than we anticipated because of the ankylosis of those but i'm not worried at all about that it's absolutely fine because i'm going to go ahead and we're making a new set of complete dentures for him so i review patients one week after extracting the teeth just to make sure it's as comfortable as possible because they do hurt and the denture can be a little bit sore in various areas, you know, just like these little bits here. So this is one week after extracting the teeth. I'll take out those sutures at this visit too. This is Vicryl suture, Vicryl 3.0. So where the denture's rubbing, if it's sore at all, then I'll pop a little bit of a light-bodied um, silicone material on there and just mark up those the areas that push through. I then can grind that off with my tungsten carbide burn and give it a nice little polish with a polishing rubber. Also, what I find really useful in, um, in practice uh, is having a lathe in-house, in-office, uh, where I can actually polish dentures. It's a lathe there with pumice and also with a polishing felt cloth. And that means I can just polish those dentures really easily and it's just a dead good. So now we'll fast forward to visit four. So this is now two weeks later, working impressions. Um, I had a little bit of a hiccup with my... Uh, camera i took all of the photos but then accidentally deleted them so i've included some other photos from a different case here um, but it's exactly the same process of what we're trying to do so um, i make a special tray this has got space this is spaced for alginate it's two millimeters of space i recreate the space with some green stick on the back edge just here they're right on the post down position. And also just inside, underneath that, there'll be two other stops just over the canine positions. I position that, then check the extension in the mouth. If it's overextended, if the flange of the tray pushes up into the reflection of the sulcus there, I'll drill that back so that it is clear and not overextended. So this is the this is how this looks before the green sticks placed in the mouth and after. But those stops are lovely. It means I can just push that in and just seat it. And then if, if it's overextended, I just adjust this out of the mouth and then tungsten carbide burr. And then I add green stick on these buckle edges here, pop those into the mouth, fit fit it down, and do some border moulding. Can you see the difference in the border moulding there? So that it goes nice and thin on those areas there. Super important that. So pop it in, mold the cheek, mold the cheek, get the patient to waggle the jaw from side to side and open wide. Um, and that's essentially what I'm trying to do. I'm also trying to get them to do different yawns and all these different things that we're, you know, maybe gonna be um uh you know looking at there too. So let's just now, we'll pop the adhesive on there, just fit onto the fitting surface like that. And this allows the alginate to stick to the tray surface. So I mix that up really lovely and runny there. Glaze that with a little bit of um, uh, water, just running water in the tap, just over the top of that. Pop that into the mouth like this and then really go for it. So push that up nicely and then pour the mold. So I'm pulling the cheeks, all the functional movements the patient potentially going to make. Gently pulling the cheeks, 
wiggle the jaw side to side, open wide, a kiss or a suck, like that. And ease and ooze, a yawn, all those things that, and then also blowing candles out. There's another one that I'm asking them to do regularly. So, like that, because that can often get air up behind the denture. So I'm just wanting to and then to do all the movements that potentially the denture is going to move with. And then I gently get my finger underneath, pull that impression out and just work it out of the mouth there. So you get all oh, that information on, you know, beautifully all the way around, border moulded. So this is where the coronoid process comes across and rubs into the side of the denture just there like that. It's fantastic, just there. And so that's all that job done really beautifully there. So that's that. And then that if we move on to the lower one, um, I'm going to, first of all, this is lower tray. Now, this lower tray is close fitting and it sits, so it's made directly onto that primary cast. Rowan might put a little bit of wax on just to stop it from having undercuts on it. And the first thing I do is I try it in the mouth and make sure it's not sore before I put my green stick on. Make sure it's not sore. If it is, is if it is a bit sore, then I'll use silicone underneath, like as a fit check. Press that down, and if it hurts, then I adjust it. So if it pushes through, then I adjust that back. Um, so here we go. We've got so once I'm happy that the tray is nice and comfy, and um, also it's not overextended as well. I just want to check that. I put buckle green stick on here and here, take this to the mouth, and then get the patient to go e ooh whilst I'm holding it in place. E ooh, and it makes it thin here. So the patient's E and ooh, these side bits there are just really pushing those side sections down like that. I then add some on the inside all the way around here. And I want the patient to lick the lip whilst I'm holding the tray in place, lick the lip so that their tongue is molding this section underneath, side to side, push against the lower front of the teeth. Yeah, and then have a good powerful swallow. And that creates this lovely shape uh, for the green stick. I don't add green stick to these bits at all, you know, to those retro molar pads. I then mix up my zinc oxide, you know. Now, another material that's great for this is Imprigum, is a, a super material as well but i love zinc oxide personally because it's got loads of body to it and mix up the tray it usually takes about four minutes to set this material so i don't put too much in just load that in take that to the mouth press it down and then get the patient to go e push against the strut powerful swallow do that twice and really exaggerated and it's all of the side of that denture of the tray this here is producing a lovely polished surface prescription and they just come out beautifully these things it's so predictable really really lovely for Rafiq there so we can now get those poured up ready to go so another thing that I do like to do at the primary impression, sorry, the working impression appointment is do primary jaw registration rims. So this is just two wax blocks here, a wax block at the top and a wax block at the bottom with these pivots on here. I trim that to the correct vertical dimension like this. There, so we get that to the right vertical dimension. It's very, very quick. I just do this in five minutes. And this, I, this enables Rowan to mount the working casts on the articulator and then set up a Gothic arch tracer. 
Um, I put cut grooves in here like that, squirt that in between, and then that's locked in place there. So these are the primary jaw wax rims. So the sole purpose for these are to mount the working casts on the articulator like that. So Rowan will cut off the flanges off the wax rim there to enable him to do that. This wax block is not used for prescribing the two positions because I want to do a really accurate jaw registration. And this helps me do that really accurate jaw registration using this thing here, the Gothic Arch Tracing System Central Bearing Apparatus. It's absolutely superb. So let's move to visit five for Rafik. So I'm going to be using two things. I'm going to carve these wax rims here. And I'm, this, the, this wax rim here is for carving and prescribing exactly and shaping where I want the teeth to go, start off with. This other one here, this is the Gothic Arch Tracer. And this is used for finding central relation to find a really accurate bite position, reproducible bite position for Rafik. So here we go. So these are the wax rims. So these are all made on those working casts that I did at the, the appointment before. These are made on the working casts. Beautiful. Final cast that we'll be making a denture on too. So they fit beautifully. Now I've got this as a guide. This is the primary impression of those really, you know, those carrier's teeth that we took out, but it gives us the right size, shape and position of the teeth. So I'm gonna be really careful now carving this wax rim to get it as close as possible to this in the mouth. So I wanna just imagine Rafik having his natural teeth back there. So at this appointment, I like to carve a post dam onto the working cast and then feed in the wax into that post dam there. It means that the upper rim stays in place better. I get better suction on it. I then carve the rim and I do it in a specific way using six steps. So getting the lip support, incisal plane, loosal plane, buccal cord or center line. OVD, just right for this patient. So I'm just carve those in steps there. So everything is looking good. And here he is with this in place. So this is the lip support here. We've got a nice occlusal plane parallel to the campus plane. If we come around to the front here, we've given him some buckle corridors. We've got the center line carved on there and everything's at the correct vertical dimension of occlusion. And I judge the vertical here by if the patient looks right, they are right. That's how I do all of these types of procedures is if the patient looks right with what we've got, then they are right. And I get my dental nurse, Claire, her participation is crucial to this. Really, really crucial. So once we've trimmed it, that's all that nicely done. I'll be doing a face bow on that. So I pop a face bow onto that. I use the Danar system. I'd be quite happy to use any high quality articulator system that's out there on the market. I happen to use Danar because I've used it for years and we've got five articulators in the practice, Danars. So I line that up with the centre line, take this to the mouth, and Rafiq's got that in place. He's got the pivots in the bottom as well, so he just closes together and holds that in, and then I get this all lined up. And this is great because this enables Rowan to position the working cast in the same three-dimensional relationship as the patient, and effectively Rowan will have Rafiq's head on the bench looking at him in the articulator, and then he can arrange the teeth knowing 
that the plane of the occlusion is going to be the same as with him walking around. It's the same social position. Another advantage of doing the face bow here is we can open and close the vertical dimension if we need to do that, which is really rare because I've recorded the OVD by looking at the patient to see whether they look right. So here we've got the central bearing apparatus. So this is the sec second part of the dual registration visit is recording central relation. And it's just tremendous. I've got these two plates. This is the upper plate here, the, the upper tray that fits in the upper arch. And on that metal plate there, I use heat that up and put a China graph mark on it. And then that goes into the mouth. So I've got the upper plate the upper um, tray there and the lower tray there sitting there and this is going to go forwards and backwards and we're going to record exactly where the central relation is so it's gone forward and back forward and back side to side and also scribble anywhere and it produces a really nice triangle so that's CR just there so 99.9% .9 of the time I build my dentures to that occasionally Patients have got a very habituated forward position of that, which is a, a really reproducible tapping point, tap, 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 which could well be where their intercuspal position used to be. Now, if a patient's got a really reproducible one of those, that's where we set the teeth up there. But 99% of the time, it's back here too. So it just goes right over that, bang. Superb. And then, so I put a plastic disc right over that, back into the mouth, lock it together, that in, and then I squirt Futar D into it so that we've now got a really accurate jaw registration position where the lower jaw and the upper jaw are in center of correlation. And then that can be then translated into the articulator. So Rowan will remount he'll take off both the upper and lower working cast from the articulator, take those off, and then he'll refit them using this and the face bow. So this is the, uh, so this is what goes back to, um, to Rowan. So these working casts here will be just trimmed off and it'll be refitted onto the articulator just like that. So the upper, cast is mounted using the face bow and then the lower cast is mounted using the uh, central bearing apparatus and the vertical here is determined by the height of the wax rims so that's that so here we go to the try-in Ron sets the teeth up he set them up using the guides that we've got so photographs of of him with smiling with this in place and and also with the um, study cast that we have of uh, Rafiq too. So that's it ready for trying. This is a shellac base with wax uh, rim just there. Nice bit of recession on these teeth. My dentures always look quite short from here to here, here to here, compared to a lot of other dentures. This is super, super important. This is why my dentures if you look at all my patients they just look fantastic um because of the um uh, the the way that i've carved the the rim for rowan and he just positions the teeth on but it does mean that there's a lack here there's often very little space it's really important for implant stuff is this too so that's the lower denture there fully extended right up the retromolar pads Nicely arranged teeth. Again, he's got quite big ridges, so the thickness from there to there is quite small. You know, I don't want to jack him open massively. This is a problem. Jacking open a patient in terms of the vertical really is a massive problem for these types of um, cases. So take this to the wax try-in. Just verify everything. Make sure the fit's good. Also, make sure the occlusion's bang on too, you know, with the concentric. And that's what I find with the using the Gothic arch, it's just so good. Um, 
make sure he's, you know, Rafiq's totally happy with the aesthetics and they look really lovely. You know, just the same character of, of what he used to have, um, but just nice looking teeth. And then Rowan finishes the dentures. Now, I love using metal strengtheners in, in both upper and lower dentures. You know, and I use it so often because what I've found is that the pe the dentures are really, really comfortable that we've made. And, and I've just, I learned from my mistakes, basically. We've had patients come in with broken dentures, investing thousands of pounds, a lot of money, having this stuff done. They hate it when the denture breaks. So these metal reinforcements are just super important. So the metal reinforcements are made, dentures are finished, processed. Rowan just makes these by flasking and packing them. And he gets all of the acrylic. The, the gum work looks amazing. Um, and that's just using acrylics. It's called Secret Acrylic Tinting Systems. It's an American product that he's using. So it's Secret Acrylic Tinting System that he uses for this. So... Dentures are, with the metal reinforcement, they're a touch heavier than normal. I'd say most complete upper dentures are around about 20 grams. Uh, adding the metal in adds just another sort of five grams. It could be significant in some cases. Um, uh, titanium is definitely lighter, but it's just not quite as rigid. Uh, so it's the, there's a little bit more flex with titanium than there is with cobalt chrome. So that's why I go with cobalt chrome. It's not as flexible. Plus, my dental technician is ace at working with chrome. That's the lower denture. That's 17 grams. I think the heavier, the better <laughs> for lowers, really, if we can manage it. You know, like gold-based dentures used to be advocated in the past. So here we are. Just going to finish. He's got this little exostosis here. I've just worked around that. That will eventually just resorb back into place just there. But just if you remember, I did take these teeth out, um, you know, not very long ago. And I just got on with making the denture. So these are the complete dentures finished. Rome makes it just beautifully fitting. It's got a post dam on it all the way around the back edge there. Beautifully um, extended. That's where we've got the little bony exostosis. This, all this area is going to change over the next nine months. So I'll, I'll be sorting that out, you know, really quite soon. Now, these teeth are made by Shotlander. That Shotlander is a British firm. I helped with them. Um, Rowan and I both helped them in producing these particular type of teeth and we've been using them now for about 10 years and they are really really lifelike they've got lovely translucency they're beautiful teeth they look amazing um, and i i love them and rowan just characterizes them if need be these are not characterized these are just taken straight off the card just put a little bit of um a little bit of wear in just there for that sort of thing too so all ready to fit you can see how short that is there look at the depth of sulcus but it looks right the whole dentures look really right not too big in terms of depth you know lovely imbrication lovely ginger v not over the top just subtly done really nice nice imbricated lower teeth you just worn a little bit of a slant there just look way better. And then this is the important thing here. Rowan sets the teeth up so that the buckle surfaces of these lower teeth here, the buckle edge is set right over the pound line. Over the sorry, on the um right on the crest of the ridge. So the actual cusp central fossa are set over the pound line, which is in this, this position just here, not the crest of the ridge. And that just creates a little bit more space for the patient's tongue to sit on, hold the denture in place. Just a little bit like aerodynamics, pushing that down to place. So you can see, and it, Rowan fills up the, you know, make sure he, the denture just finished right up to the edge of my impression, because this impression is done in a, it's just beautifully extended. So it's not overextended. It's not underextended. It's just right. So he takes it to there. And this is part of why 
the whole thing fits beautifully because it, the wax work and, and the shape of the denture is shaped in such a way that the polished surfaces help the denture stay seated. So here we go. So this is fitting of the denture. So it's actually approximately two months after extracting the teeth. There you can see that we've got this resorption taking place. This is the finished denture looking ace. Nice dark canines, if you notice that. The darker canines, slightly lighter teeth. So these front teeth will be A3. These are A3.5 posterior teeth. Just look better. A little bit of wear on them, just to make them look good. Lovely, even occlusion. There. I want them to be a chopper, not a grinder. That's the, you know, beautifully extended there. And look at that. That's it fitted. So can you see how even now his tongue is just sitting there beautifully and just, and just allowing the denture just to sit, you know, really, really nicely too. So um, that's really good. And if we look at the side here, you can see that buckle tongue contact area just to help hold that in. So we've got these three things that are working in favour here because it doesn't always happen. We've got the this lovely tongue position holding the dentist down. We've got this great ridge height there. We've also got those soft tissues in the floor of the mouth, just helping us to form a seal as well as having as well as having a great technician who's just do, copies exactly what I'm going to reproduce in my impression, which is super, super important. Now, in patients that I'm just, I want to get balanced articulation on, then what I do is I mix up with toothpaste some of these metal filings. It's um, little iron filings that are just mixed with the toothpaste and the patient grinds around works on the occlusion trying to sound away anything that is just in the way and then i can rinse that out and i do that i get them to do that for about 10 minutes take the dentures off them give them a really good clean and then that just helps with the with them just getting used to them even though i do want them to be i want them to be a chopper not a grinder so here we that's um been fitted you know, off he, off he goes. I do train the patients I talk to. You know, I talk to them about, because it's an artificial limb. It's like having an, a, an artificial hand or a leg. You're not going to be able to walk easily if you have an artificial leg. It's exactly the same with teeth. It's going to take time. There's two stages to this. Number one is it's going to hurt to start off with. Even beautifully made dentures like this going to but I'm here to help. And generally it's three reviews, I need to adjust things. And then after that, once they're comfortable, it's practice. But anyway, with, with Rafik, because I'd taken his front teeth out there, that and uh, two months previously, underneath the upper anterior portion of the denture, I need to just keep an eye on that and reline it. So four months after extracting, the teeth, I did a chair side reline in the complete denture using Voco Ufi gel. Hard. It's really good stuff. So a bit of wax on the outside of these teeth first placed. I put the Ufi gel inside here, take it to the mouth, and then get the patient to e -oo, blow candles out, have a yawn. I gently pull the cheek so it's just beautifully moulded. And then from this, I can just peel off this um, wax and clean it up. So that's the material that I've used there. It's called Ufi Gel Hard Voco. And you can see it's just starting to fill in these spaces there really nicely too. Beautiful. It even goes onto the metal. I used a little bit of metal primer on that too. It's absolutely fine. There. So that's it. It fits. And then... If we fast forward four months later, we're developing a gap again there. Now, this is approximately nine months after extracting the teeth. 
So we're now ready to do a lab reline, called cure resin. So this is the lab reline, just there, like that, done. So that's the impression I'm going to do for it. It's in silicone. You can see it's just filled in, in little gaps. I don't want to make it too thick. Reline impressions are generally too thick and massive. And I don't want that to happen. So I do it super thin, press it in really firmly and mould it, just like doing a working impression. E, U, waggle the jaw, open wide, blow a kiss, suck my finger, yawn. All of those, all of those functional uh, movements are super important to record this impression, just there like that. And then Rowan makes a, an occlusal key in this, pours the cast, and then relines the denture. So this is what he, this is how Rowan relines it. So we've got the reline cast, and then he puts in, and he uses a cold cure material called Pegasus, it's Shotlander Pegasus, and we love it. It produces a great fitting denture there. It's fantastic. You know, and we can do this in the future, further down the line if necessary too. So that's it there. And you can see how it started to fill in all of these little gaps just there. And this created a really good suction on this. You know, it's fitting beautifully there. Really, really good. That's in, in place, and he's functioning beautifully with this now. So that's it fit. You can see there, BTC point. Got this great suction. I love this. All right. So that's how he finished up. Everything's starting to shrink back there. This was, it, this will continue to do that, and I'd be very happy to reline that in maybe 12 months' time if it's needed. So, well, the mouth's looking nice and healthy there. It's really good. And he coat beautifully with it. So these are the two differences in the dentures. You can see that we've got different depths. So, so many dentures are just too long from here to here. And it creates a really poor aesthetic appearance. This is so important if you're planning implants, implant surgeons out there, you know, implant dentists. You just you have to think about these sorts of things for the all in six cases because often there really is no room in these areas. It's really, really important. You see how this dips right down. It's so much higher from there to there than my denture from here to here. Different shape. Different look, much better. Lower, lower footprint's just not good with this old denture there. It's underextended up here, and it's just not bored and molded to the functional depth. This is what helps to create that suction effect. It's still too tall, though. Massive from here to here. There to there, much shorter. You know, so most, if you look at any of my dentures on my case studies or videos, complete dentures, you'll just see they've all got a standard shape to them. Um, it's all set shape there. So anyway, that's fantastic. I really, I really love taking someone from this to this. He's a really happy patient. He can chew and eat. He's really worked at it. You know, part of the part of the battle with or part of the success and the very important part of the success is managing the patient's expectations with these sorts of things because they've really got to play their part in the success of this. So it's fantastic. Lovely. So uh, anyway, thanks very much for joining me. Bye for now. Bye bye.